Let's translate Genesis 1, verse 27. Ayevra Elohim, et ha'adam, et salmo, et salem, Elohim, bara otho, zakar unkeva, bara otham. And he created God. God is the subject. The object is ha'adam, Adam, in his image in the image of god he created him zakar male and nikava female he created them and elohim created Adam, the man, there we go, in the image of God, he created So it's a chiasm, it's poetry, poetic. You can see the parallel here and here. So A, B, B, A. He created them. And then we have in apposition, Zakar, male and female. He created them. And Elohim created Adam according to his image. In the image of God, he created him, Adam male and female, he created them. So it's very poetic. Uh, we could move this down here like that, or like this, but I'm gonna leave it up here and preserve the word order a little bit. But now we need to take a look at the vocabulary. Bara. This is to create. It's very much a theological term. The subject of which is invariably God. God creates. And he creates male and female. Elohim. It's plural. But because the verb is singular, third masculine singular, this is a reference not to gods, deities, but to the God. And he creates Adam. Ha-Adam. So Ha-Adam indicates it's not Adam, the first man, because you don't put the definite article on a name. So this has to be a reference to mankind people collectively mankind and creates mankind in his image this is selem and these are verbs we want to see the noun there we go and it's selem number one selem Statue, statue of a god, idol, image, 
figure, replica, likeness, likeness of a man as the Selem of God, Genesis 1, and following. And this means man, humanity, is God's viceroy, representative, or witness among the creatures. In the image of God, he created him. So here it's third masculine singular because it matches Adam, which is common masculine singular. But then, Zakar Unkeba, male and female. This is very interesting. Zakar, which means male. Uh, it strictly means along the lines of phallus, so it's phallic. And that makes sense. Men have a penis. But uh, it's not exactly clear that Zakar literally means phallus. So th this is a little bit of a, a leap. You can see it's in Middle Hebrew where it means man, male, animal, phallus. Uh, and then uh, you can see here in Halo, it's etymology unknown. So it's not entirely clear, but basically the meaning is phallus. Then you get to the next word. Unkeva. Now we have the vav conjunction here. So really the word is nekeva. Uh, this means female. Uh, it literally means perforated. And when you look at the root, nekav, uh, it's very explicit. So uh, parallel cognates here means passage, mine. And then the verb to bore. So uh, the imagery here is what seems to be intentional um, to correlate with the female anatomy. Can we say the same thing for Zakar? Not really. So if we look at the cognate roots here, to be strong, maybe. Uh, but when we get to the rest of Zakar, it doesn't really align. Remember, call to mind, name, mention, doesn't really, doesn't really work. Such is the nature of semantics sometimes. And he created them. And that's it. So, God created humanity in his image. He created them in the image of God. He created them male and female. If you liked this video, hit the like button. Brush up on your Hebrew, brush up on your Greek, and we'll see you next time.